Hey everybody, welcome back to Art à la carte. Today I'm going to be taking a request I've gotten from several of my viewers asking how do I make those jagged lines when I draw my cuddly furry creatures? So I'm going to take you through step by step how I do that. So as you can see, I've already pre-drawn up a drawing of a kind of a cartoon take of a mountain lion. I have kept all the lines very smooth around all the edges. There's no indication of fur. Even though I've made in my fur markings, it's all very smooth. So let's take a look at some different kinds of lines. You have your really straight lines, and then you have your gesture lines, which are kind of crazy and go for shape. And then you have what are considered your texture lines. And these are lines that are going to give you or your viewers an indication of some, some textures going on there. So let me show you up close some different texture lines that you can achieve with your pencil. To add a texture line, you're simply taking and replacing just your straight shape line with something that has a little bit of form to it. See, it's following the same shape, but it's not keeping that smooth line. So how do I know? Well, first you have to decide what kind of texture does your drawing have. Does it have fur? Does it have hair? Does it have feathers? Or does it have scales? All these different things are going to have different types of textures. So now let's talk about fur. So fur, just like hair and scales and feathers, you're going to use kind of a different movement of your line to create um, the illusion of a texture. And usually, like with hair, I'll kind of clump it a little bit together. But just like with the feathers and the scales, I'm not going to have it all the same. I'm not going to go, because that's really not going to be realistic. Having some clump together and maybe thin out a little bit and a little bit more clump together um, are going to kind of give a little bit more of a realistic look to it. You're also going to want to think about which way the hair is growing. If you look at the skin of at whatever animal you're drawing, you're going to notice that the hair is going to grow out, or the fur is going to grow out in a certain direction. That's why they tell you never to pet a cat backwards, because it hurts. Because um, these hairs are are going out in this direction. This way when water and things come down it kind of goes sweeping off and doesn't soak in as much. So when I'm drawing my fur I will keep it all going the same direction. I'm not going to have it start going this way otherwise you're going to get what's called a cow lick where the hair then turns direction. Um, you'll notice that sometime in people's hairs they'll have cow licks where your hair will go in one direction and all of a sudden changes the way it's turning. So kind of gives a really rough look to it. You can use it, but in general general rule is the hair will always flow in a similar direction. So the change of direction. As you're drawing your fur down, a good place to show some really good fur action is when something changes direction or bends, whether it's in a leg or in a tail, when you find that, you're going to have a little bit of disruption with the fur, and then as it continues on its way. With a long-haired animal, you're going to see not too much difference, because it's really going to be shaggy, but you really see this great difference if it's a short-haired animal. See, I have a short-haired animal, but I have this really nice curve in the body. I'm going to keep it smooth until it comes to the curve, and then I'm going to add a little bit of disruption, and then smooth it back out again. So anywhere it changes direction, I'm going to add just a little bit of pulling out. So it's going to take some practice. Getting that kind of right and smoothing it out. Looking at pictures, especially if you want to go more cartoony than realistic, look at how people um, draw and illustrate these kind of things. Um, see how they do it, and then try to imitate it, and pretty soon you'll begin finding your own style. So with that said, let's look at the mountain line and see where are some areas that we can add some texture to it. First of all, we have to decide, is it feathers, scales, hair, or fur? And obviously with this, it would be fur. The first thing I'm going to determine is where's the long fur and where's the short fur. And I'm going to draw that in first. So I'm going to have some really good tufts here in the, in the ear. I have to sharpen my pencil first. So I'm going to add some tufts in the ear here first. Again, I'm thinking about how the hair is positioned out, where, which way is it growing, and then kind of with gravity how it's pulling it down a little bit. 
I'm also going to think about maybe on the tops of the ears, maybe being just a little bit fluffier. So as it turns around the and curves wraps around, I'm going to add a little bit more tufts. Then to give a little bit of character to my cartoon mountain lion, I'm going to add a little bit of tuft of fur at the top of the head. And I'm going to bring it down just slightly, kind of giving it more of a kind of a cute hairdo kind of look. <laughs> then I'm going to look for areas that are changing directions, which are on these cheeks here. So I'm going to keep it really smooth because I want it to be kind of short hair. I don't want it to be long like on the ears or the top of the hair, or fur I should say. But I'm just going to add a couple fur mark lines right along the cheeks. And that's going to just bring a little bit of texture down. Looking down here, I have two types of fur. I'm going to continue on this fur here being short fur, but I want the underbelly to be a little bit longer and shaggy. So to make a difference between these two, I'm going to go ahead and add in some fur lines coming along the chest area. Because I want it to appear long and shaggy, I'm going to draw the fur lines continuously down along the end of the, of the chest and underneath the belly here. That's going to give a definition that this is longer and shaggier, where this is a little bit shorter fur. But again, I'm going to look now on the short fur and find where those changes of direction are and add some indications there. The last thing I'm going to look at in this drawing is the tail. Now I've added my fur lines in the outlines, but I also want to transfer out that in the shape. Instead of having just these smooth lines separate the different tones of, of color, I'm going to add some jagged lines to that as well. By changing that smooth line into kind of a jaggy line, it's going to give an indication of the fur markings. And there we go. So my line is looking pretty good and uh, definitely can tell it's a lot furrier and cuddlier than it was before. So hopefully this helped you out. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any other videos that I do. I try to post a new art video each week and I'm trying even to work into getting at least two up each week coming up in the future. So hopefully that will work out for us. Um, but thank you guys for commenting and leaving your requests. I do uh, write down every single request that I get. Not that I can do every single video, but definitely I do read them and I have them in my little request book. And so every time I do a video, I always go to my request uh, booklet and choose one of your guys' videos. So greetings to all of my new subscribers. I hope that you enjoy these videos and stick around and draw with us again next time. Talk to you later, guys. God bless you. Bye-bye.